Hello guys, welcome back again. This is me, I'm Nafid, again. Today is gonna to be the video about Ubuntu DHCP installation for the server. So we're gonna look at the installation of the DHCP. Uh, first of all, we look at the Ubuntu installation, update, install the DHCP, and then we run a sample. That's the lab, how it looks like, basically. So we have an access switch. We're gonna mimic that one as if it is a client. So the switch itself will pick up an IP address now there's a DHCP uh, IP helper address inside the multi-layer default gateway switch, which is the one that will uh, facilitate the communication. So now this is the ASXi server. We will be installing, first of all, you will have downloaded the Ubuntu server from the Ubuntu website. And you will have uploaded this Ubuntu server on the ESXi. Now that's the start of the installation. We give the server a name and the name doesn't matter um, and then we follow uh, look at what the type of the operating system in this case it's uh, ubuntu 64-bit now in here it's your choice so um, i have selected a bunch of uh, settings that you don't have to go with the same so it depends on your environment 8 cpu 8 gig memory and 48 gigabyte for the space now um, the hard disk again um, it's your choice whatever size of course, a network, um, you know, you're going to just connect to a certain network. Here, I'm showing you an example of an, a preloaded um, Ubuntu version 22.04. You will use that one as the ISO image. So once you connect to that as an ISO image, basically, you will move on. The installation will start and that might take a few minutes. So once that installation is uh, sorted out, you will click on the Ubuntu, you're going to start it. So that's the start, so we're going to power on that server. Once the server has been powered on, you select the try or install Ubuntu server. By the way, a server or a desktop, Ubuntu desktop or Ubuntu server will work in both of these cases. DHCP will be able to run on also Ubuntu desktop. So this is just an example of a server configuration that we will follow through. Um, so you go select your, uh, your, your region, your time, time zone and so on. Uh, the Ethernet interface card by default is DHCP, meaning that it will pick up an IP address by a DHCP. The fact that we configure this one as a server, DHCP server, it does make sense, of course. It doesn't work if the interface card with the, with the services are available, um, are DHCP. So basically, you're going to assign static IP address to these interfaces. Now, in this example, I'm showing you a single interface. So basically, we are uh, installing single interface um, on the DHCP server. And that interface would be the one that will be receiving the query. So the IP address will have been configured as an IP helper address, like in this case, it is 10.254.1.21. Now that IP address has been configured as the IP helper address in the core switch that will facilitate the communication between the client and the DHCP server. In this case, it's the Ubuntu server. Obviously, if you have multiple servers, then multiple interfaces where you serve multiple networks, you can add multiple interfaces. Now, um, I'm gonna show you a few bits and pieces because if you don't follow these steps, you might get some errors, um, which I came across when I tried to install the DHCP service on the Ubuntu server. Now, of course, you will um, install the DHCP, um, the Ubuntu itself, you, you run the updates, you will install the uh, SSH, uh, open SSH server. Basically, this is really, really um, important. Uh, that will facilitate us communicating with the server uh, remotely so using SSH traffic. You provide all the details here, like your name, the username you're going to use. You just select a password of your own choice. And then once you finish all of these um, steps, uh, you can always go back and change the name, change the IP address. I'll show you how to do that. Um, Initially, we'll uh, configure the, uh, some details, like the username, uh, password of your choice. Uh, make sure that the password is not easy to guess. At least, um, I know it's a lab environment, at least. Now in here, we install the OpenSSH server and uh, we select uh, whatever package you'd like to select. I left it as is. So you can always come back later and install other things. So you're gonna move on from this point. Once the installation finishes, basically you're gonna go back and configure the rest of the configuration. 
So the server uh, might take time, it might need to reboot. So you're going to reboot the server. In this case, I'm just removing uh, the, C um, the CD, if you like, the DVD from the interface. So it will be unmounted. Server reboot. Once the server comes back online, we would like to switch to that. It's much easier because you can copy paste. If your console from ASX is, is, uh, uh, interface, it's not possible to copy paste and uh, scroll back and uh, it's not easy to deal with. So now I'm looking into that server with these details as you can see clearly. Now we are inside the server. So what I'd like to do now install the um, any updates. So we're going to check if there are updates here. We can see 334 packages can be upgraded. And now we're going to do sudo apt apt um, upgrade uh, with the keyword yes. And then just let uh, this run, probably it will uh, take one or two or three minutes. It depends on uh, where you are. So now we, we just move on from here. Now we've done the update. So that's the first thing you, you need to do. The second step you're going to configure or you're going to go about is basically to double check, maybe double check the IP address of the server. Uh, in this case, we will go for what's so called NetPlan. So NetPlan and we go to the NetPlan. Now the NetPlan is really quite interesting because this is the way um, the machine, uh, basically you can uh, add IP addresses, make changes, DNS and all that stuff. So we're going to install now the ISC DHCP server, which is the package where the DHCP services are running on. Once you install that package, then that will create a folder. And once you create a folder, basically that will be automatically created. You're going to move on under the etc. folder. So you're going to do um, nano, uh, etc. DHCP, and there's a config file, DHCP daemon file. Now that's a sample file where you can make a lot of changes, obviously. Now this is a sample file we're going to modify. We're going to make a few changes here to serve our own purpose. Now this is a default lease time. This is the maximum lease time. So you can make changes if you would like. I just added 6,000 seconds, basically. So uh, 100 minutes, for example. Um, and you might want to add the authoritative uh, keyword, uh, which means that this is an active um, if you like the DHCP zone, um, the server is able to lease out IP addresses. Now, they, they provide you with sample uh, settings, if you like. So the typical um, way to do it is probably try one of these ranges um, and then make changes. So the key point here is what I've discovered, basically. You would like to include the interface, so the interface where the request is sent Two. So in our case, the IP address of our interface is 10.254.1.21. Though we are not intending to lease IP addresses in this example on that interface, but I would like to include that interface. So the first thing to do is to make sure that you understand what is the name of your actual interface. In this case, the ENS160. So make sure you can uh, take a note of that name and double check that that name or the that um, Ethernet card if you like is mapped to the proper IP address This is where the configuration of the DHCP server ie the IP help address will be pointing to in this example to to 10.254.1.21 So I've added the subnet 10.254.1.0 mask um, 255, 255, 255 should be to, to zero. We're going to change that one later on. And the reason, if you don't do this step, you will get an error message that it's not mapped. There's no listening interface. Um, so you're going to add this one, even though you you can still have a range of IP addresses leased on that uh, specific subnet. But in this case, we don't intend to do that. But you will always include that subnet, even if you don't really want to lease any IP addresses on that one. So I will include this one, and um, I will then include uh, a sample, uh, if you like, um, uh, VLAN, which is a, in this case will be VLAN 120. And that VLAN 120, we will look at the switch where we pick up the IP address um, on that specific VLAN. So we're going to delete some of these lines, basically just for housekeeping stuff. It doesn't really, it wouldn't have made any, any impact. But we're going to create a sample file now or a sample subnet. Um, 
and then that sample subnet that will be the one that will uh, will will assign uh, VLAN 20 on the VLAN 20. So the range of IP or the client will pick up an IP in subnet VLAN 20. So I just I said the, the test uh, network. So in this case, I'm just going to copy paste and make changes to the configuration here. And once you make changes, simply speaking, um, if you have configured the your core switch uh, correctly with IP helper address that is pointing to 254.1.21, uh, then that shouldn't be a problem. So in this example, we are doing um, network of 10.1.120. And then we're going to look at the ranges. So 10.1.120, the IP address for the default gateway would be 10.1.120.1. And then we will later on um, configure the range where the clients will pick up an IP address. Notice also that I have included interface ENS160. So that interface ENS160, simply speaking, is the interface where the client uh, will send an IP request, i.e. the DHCP service should be mapped to that interface, specific interface. So here 10.1.120.0, and uh, then the range of IP addresses, whatever range um, your design is, in this case, it is between 10.1.120.100 and 10.1.120, probably 150 or something like that. Once you do that, then you are good to go now we need to restart the services so now we have not yet finished because there should be a curly bracket um, at the end so we're going to add a curly bracket at the very end uh, one. now the curly bracket has been added so we are ready to go basically we're going to save these configurations and move on to the next stage so once you save the configuration you're going to restart that service basically so you're going to go system control restart the isc the cp service once we restart, we're going to double check the status of that service. Once we're happy with that, i.e. everything is working, we need to go now and mimic the client and find out if the client is able to pick up an IP address. Discovery is being sent from clients, but we have not configured any ranges for this. That's why you find no ranges. So now this is the switch, the layer 2 switch. We are going to go for VLAN 120. Initially, we have no IP address and we made it as a DHCP client. Now that DHCP client should pick up an IP address straight away from the server. That's the layer 3 switch. We're going to see the VLAN 120 it has an IP helper address pointing to 10.254.1.21, which is the IP address of the actual Ubuntu server. There's a reachability between these two VLANs, VLAN 120 and the actual server. So there we go now. We double check the IP address. Now you can see the IP has been picked up on the um, switch. So we'll double check the lease. So we can see clearly this one VLAN or one IP address has been leased to that specific client. So that's the end of the video. Thank you very much. 